Metanomics is brought to you by Remedy Communications and Doosan Writers Metaverse. Okay, and that that takes us fairly naturally then to this notion of virtual presence and uh, uh, you know, I think uh, regular viewers of Metanomics have heard a lot of people define what a virtual world is and does it need this capability or that capability. Uh, but you've taken a more empirical approach where you you have been trying to assess how present users feel uh, in virtual worlds. And so, uh, can you uh, can you talk a little bit? Uh, I guess first, just about the scale. Uh, what what you what are the dimensions of this scale that you are trying to capture? Sure. So yes, and part of what started us down this path as my colleague Ann Massey and I started looking at virtual worlds is if we start looking at the research, much of which has been done in the gaming and military simulation context, one thing you see is this idea of presence seems to be a desirable attribute as some kind of self-evident goal and a pervasive belief that more sense of presence is good but we could not find any consistent way to assess that. Right? There were many different measures and studies from all sorts of angles, but no validation uh, using fairly standard measurement development techniques. So part of what we started doing is we looked at the literature, which suggests that there are uh, the presence is a very complex notion, and we started talking about it as presence is metadata. It really has everything to do with your sense of the context around you and the information around you and others around you and, and how those things are all interrelated. Uh, presence includes input from multiple sources, so it's not just sound or text or visual. It, all of these things can create a sense of presence. And so this is a very individual factor. Uh, the more we studied what others were looking at and what has been said, we've broken it down into three major dimensions of factors that we think are sit underneath this concept of collaborative virtual presence. And, and our focus is on collaborative. So not just my sense of awareness in a virtual space, but that I'm here to work with someone else. So my ability to collaborate and, and the collaborative virtual presence that might be a part of that. So we've broken it down into three pieces. Uh, and, and the idea that there are three relationships that are essential to collaborative work and how presence might contribute to that. And that is the relationship between self and the environment. And that's described as immersion. And that's the degree to which I am immersed in the environment and feel myself to be there. And second is the relationship between myself and the task. And we call that absorption. And that's the degree to which I get lost in what I'm doing and what I'm working on with you in this virtual environment. And then the third dimension has to do with the relationship between myself and others. So that's my awareness of others in this space with me. And so we're defining collaborative virtual presence along these three dimensions, immersion, awareness, and absorption, which are a function of my relationship to other things, people, the task, and the environment. And our study thus far uh, relates back to something Tony mentioned at the outset, uh, the NSF Voss. Um, program and as well as the NSF CDI program are both programs that have provided preliminary support for our work and we have additional proposals underway where what we are doing is we have developed the scale. We started with some 50 odd measures. We've reduced it down to 29. The, the, this has involved data collection with to date 190 people participating in exercises in Second Life. Uh, we have another 145-ish participating in exercises in Wonderland. Uh, we are collecting data with participants in Protosphere because an important part of having a valid measurement scale is that you validate across platforms and affordances provided by the environment to understand what drives And we're also collecting additional sensory data, including eye tracking data, uh, as well as physiological response data to understand the relationship to what you feel, what you say, which is what we typically capture as perceptual measures, but also how you are responding physically to your 
perception in a space. Mm -hmm. And and so, so just uh, I guess to summarize, you have these three of this collaborative presence. It's it's to what extent are you in the space? Uh, to what extent are you in the task? And to what extent are you, do you feel like you're really with other people? So are, are those? Uh, am I close enough summarizing that's it that way? That's exactly right. Yes, that's yep. right. And and so to what extent are you? I mean, have you gotten enough data to figure out? whether these are uh, positively or negatively correlated. I mean, I can imagine, you know, you talked about one of the things groups do is engage in social uh, and, uh, you know, just social interaction, which is off task. So, so uh, you know, I think a lot of people have worried that uh, you come into a place like Second Life. It's not that just that the place itself is game-like, but uh, that you may be tempted to interact with people off task. Uh, so do, are you, are you going to be able to get a sense of whether that's the case? Right. So a couple of things that we've done in our first preliminary studies, we do see a positive relationship with performance. That's an overarching statement. But then when you break it down and look at what people are doing and what the benefits are to performance, one of the studies we've run is we've allowed people to choose which tools they want to use for their teamwork. So providing a whole suite of Web 2.0 tools plus virtual world access. Uh, and you provide a whole suite of tools, allow teams to choose, and make sure they all have sufficient training and experience with these various technologies. And interestingly enough, they all gravitate toward, or I should say the best performing teams, all gravitate toward virtual world technologies for the social relational piece of teamwork and that is important for their performance. So for teams that don't do that and don't in fact establish a relationship among team members, they have lower performance and the virtual world tools appear to be highly effective for that. So a big part of what we're doing now is, is breaking down then which of the dimensions of collaborative virtual presence contribute most significantly to performance and I can tell you my my advanced guess, my hypothesis is that uh, it's going to depend on the task, right? There are lots of different types of tasks, as we know from past research. So depending on what the team is trying to do should have a significant uh, impact on what matters in terms of my sense of being there in a virtual world.